Good evening with the Lime Sports World, I'm Damien Best. All-rounders Deandra Dotton and Stephanie Taylor played starring roles as the West Indies women defeated England women by nine runs in their opening ICC Women's World T20 match this morning in Bangladesh. Taylor struck 56 and Kaisi night 43, and those two put on 87 together to set an excellent platform for their side in Schlett. As the Windies women posted 133 for 7, Natalie Skyver took 3 for 18, and Dotton then took 4 for 12, as England were held to 124 for 9 in reply. Charlotte Edwards top scored with 44. And the Windies women will next take on Bangladesh women on Wednesday. Dale Stein produced a stunning display of death bowling to secure a two-run victory for South Africa over New Zealand in the World T20 tournament in Bangladesh today. Stein finished with figures of 4 for 17, holding his nerve when New Zealand needed 7 to win from the final over and 3 from the last delivery. It was hard luck on Ross Taylor who made 68 in 37 balls and his innings was only just put in the shade by South Africa's J.P. Dumini, whose unbeaten 86 laid the foundation for Stain's heroics. And South Africa made 170 for 6 and held New Zealand to 168 for 8 for both teams to hold a 1-1 one -one record. Meanwhile, in the other game today, Sri Lanka demolished the Netherlands by 9 wickets, dismissing them for the lowest score in international T20 history. The Dutch, after being sent in, were bowled out for 39 in 10.3 overs. Sri Lanka then raced a 40 for 1 in 5. Highlights later tonight in about an hour's time join CBC Sports with Mark Seal. And tomorrow, West Indies will also try to move their record to 1 on 1 when they play host Bangladesh at 9.30 a.m. Live coverage on MCTV's ESPN channel. Meanwhile, updates in the regional cricket. The Windwards have defeated Jamaica by three wickets after reaching the victory target of 254 for the loss of seven wickets. And the CCCs are on their way to beating Guyana. They need 46 to win. Well, Marcus and Britons Hill maintain their perfect start to the football season, while Gall Hill remain hot on their heels as the BFA's Digicel Premier League continued last night at the National Stadium. A brace from Daquan Adamson and a lone strike from Ryan Griffith gave Gall Hill the 3-1 victory over Paradise as they are a perfect 3-3. Three three. Britons Hill beat Clayton's Colatonic Notre Dame and are now on 12 points from four games, while BDF pulled off a 2-1 win over Weymouth Wales. Taking on Weymouth Wales in white, only two minutes into this one. Mario Hart with the cross and the one-time effort from Rashad Jules finds the back of the net, 1-0. And the celebrations were even more dramatic. A round of applause. That's a new one for 2014. Carl Joseph canceled that one out. Four minutes later to make it 1-1. Now BDF with a chance to make it 2-1. Hart, the provider, all that was needed to beat Bentley Springer, not going to happen. Excellent save. In the second half now, players switch sides. BDF will get the go-ahead goal. 61st minute down the right flank. Numbers inside the box. Poor defending and saved first attempt. But skipper Mario Hart there for the rebound. And that would seal it. BDF 2, Wim of Wales 1. In the nightcap encounter between Britons Hill in white and Notre Dame, it only took one goal to decide the winner. Player brought down inside the box by the defender. And that, my friends, is a clear penalty. And Zakita Samuels will step up and calmly start it home as Britons Hill take the 1-0 victory. Well, Barbados Lumber Company, LSC, have been handed their first loss of the 2014 Co-Operators General Insurance Basketball Premier League. And who's the first team to beat the defending champs? Well, it's Small to Pylons. Playing at Community College in their latest game, LSC went down 72 to 60. Pylons were actually down 37 to 32 at halftime. But CBC's Mark Seal reports that it was from there that Lakers were outplayed. Charles Vantapool wrapped up another double-double. And on this play, he got one of his 12 rebounds, an offensive one, and two of his 12 points, a cutback. Coming close to a double-double, on the other end was Keith Burkett. He had eight boards, but the points, he had a game-high 18. Defensively, Burkett had the assignment of keeping Jeremy Gill in check, and that's a job you fail some of the times, like on this long two. The jumpers were raining in the college, as usual. Ian Alexander at the top of the key for two of his 15. 
And with Burkett on the bench with four fouls, Mark Bridgman played a point for a stint for the Lakers, but he gave Gill one of his four steals. Gill also had 17 points. Ramon Simmons helped out the pine with 16 as they beat the Lakers 72 to 60. Mark Seals, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Mark. Meanwhile, in a bottom of the table clash, Warrens defeated Challengers 81 to 63 to improve to 2 and 6, while Challengers have dropped to 1 and 7. The Station Hill Cavaliers are in second spot after beating Urban Vibe St. John Sonics 63 to 60. Well, basketballers, volleyballers, and other indoor sports persons in Barbados should be smiling soon. The floor of the Wildy Gymnasium is finally to be replaced. Sports Minister Stephen Lashley made the announcement today at the launch of FET City. Other structural improvements are also planned and are scheduled to commence in the latter quarter of this year. One such improvement will be the replacement of the floor that you are now sitting on, something of course that has been long overdue. Well, former Barbados Olympic Games Athletics Assistant Manager Joyanne Clark has been inducted into the Hall of Fame of her college alma mater. Clark, who attended Eastern Michigan University in the United States from 1982 to 1986, was recently celebrated in a Hall of Fame induction ceremony for six athletes, the others being three basketballers, a footballer, and an administrator. During her four years, the former Carifta Games athlete won five Mid-American Conference titles in the 100 and 200 meters, and she still holds the 55-meter field house record. Clark, who is currently the head coach at Ellerslie School, was also part of four 400-meter relay championship titles at Eastern Michigan and had also qualified for the NCAA Indoor Championships. Well, tomorrow is the final day of the Pine Hill Dairy National Primary School's Athletics Championships, NAPSAP. And CBC has all the bases covered. Covered. Uh, we'll be live all day on TV8 from 10 a.m. with the opening ceremony. While live radio coverage on 98.1 The One begins with the first event at 11 a.m. Of course, you can also follow the finals online at cbc.bb. That's it for sports. Coming up next, the business report.